What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the podcast. And tonight, I have a very special episode. I got one of my good buddies, Michael, over here. What's going on, man? How you doing? Uh, pretty good, man. How you doing? I'm good. I didn't have to work today, and you did. So I probably had a better day yeah, than you did. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I won't argue there. You definitely got me beat there. That for sure. <laughs> But I also have mixed feelings about today, considering that I had to watch the Vivich, basically, the Ooh. witch. That was your request. So we got Mike on here. Yeah. He's going to be doing two episodes with me. One was a movie that he selected. One's going to be one that I selected, but we're going to do his first. And the one that he made me watch was The Witch from back in 2015. Um, so let's just get into this and let's talk about what yeah. Rotten Tomatoes scored it. So Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 90%, which is fresh. And then we got IMDb that gave it a 6.9 out of 10, which is not too bad either. Right. It had a budget of $4 million. And watching this movie, I just don't understand where $4 million goes with a movie like this. Do you... Where do you, you know, without giving anything away yet, because we're doing no spoilers right now, what do you think that $4 million budget went towards? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, just the, you know, costuming and the, I know they had to build all the sets from the ground up. They built them from scratch. And, you know, the goat, maybe the goat training. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, $4 million is not, not really that much. I mean, really, when it comes to making a movie, so I'm sure it went pretty quick. That's true, probably. I yeah, I just when I think of like budgets, I think of all the special effects and the CG and stuff. And for this movie, since like pretty much everything was practical, it just sometimes I just wonder where four million dollars goes. You know what I mean? I can understand a million or two, but geez. Uh, so this movie was yeah. directed by Robert Eggers or Edgers. How do you pronounce that? You know, I think it's Eggers. I mean, that's what I've heard. Yeah. So it's directed by Robert Eggers, and it was also written by him as well. So when I looked on IMDb to see what else he had directed, he has a pretty short list. Um, he really only directed 2019's The Lighthouse, uh, which was a recent one. Did yeah. you see The Lighthouse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did. did you like it? I did. Um, not as much as I liked this one, but I, I liked it, but I definitely need to watch it again. I only saw it one time. So. Yeah, I think it's, it's either on Netflix or or prime now so i'm gonna check it out for sure yeah yeah it's very ambiguous like the ending is kind of like what happened so i definitely hmm. want to watch it again at some point so. oh good all right that sounds kind of interesting yeah. now um yeah. so again just kind of like how this new format is going to be for my new podcast stuff i'm going mm -hmm. to try and make this first little quarter of the review spoiler free we're going to talk about what we've thought our ratings you know, all that stuff, but sure. we're not going to give anything away yet, but then we're going to get very spoiler heavy um, right after we get done okay. with the non-spoiler stuff. So the plot of this movie is that a family in 1630s New England is torn apart by the forces of witchcraft, black magic, and possession. Okay, so this movie stars Anya Taylor-Joy. She plays Thomason, and she plays the daughter. Uh, Ralph Innocen, who plays William, which is the dad, Kate Dickey, which plays Catherine, the mom. Harvey Scrimshaw, which play, who plays Caleb, the son. Ellie Granger, who plays Mercy, the daughter. Or should I say, Mercy. And then Lucas Dawson, who plays Jonas, the son. And then we have Bathsheba Garnett, who plays the witch. Okay. Yes. Uh, Mike. Mike, Mike, Mike. Yep. Okay. So yep. I have always kind of wanted to watch the witch. Kind of. Um, I haven't heard much about it. Everything I heard has always just been mixed, like either like, oh, it's so good or it's so boring. And so for me, I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but I definitely watched like the first 10 or 15 minutes of it about a month ago or so. And there's a pretty disturbing scene in the beginning and it, it intrigued me. It caught my attention. And for whatever reason, I turned it off. I think my daughter was awake or something and I turned it off and I intended to get back to it, but I never did. And then when you told yeah. me you wanted to do the witch, I completely was like, okay, well I've been wanting to watch that. Now is there any good reason 
or now is a good reason more than ever to watch it because that's the one you want to do. So I watched it. Sure. I don't mm -hmm. understand it. <laughs> Just to be honest, I don't understand why you like it. I don't understand why it has a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't understand mm. why I watched mm. reviews afterwards about it and they were praising it. And yeah. I'm excited to be doing this podcast with you on this movie mm -hmm. specifically because I feel like we're going to have mm -hmm. very good dialogue between the two of us. So yeah. Um, yeah. I want to uh, first get into our ratings, okay? And then after I get through yeah. all this, then obviously I'm going to give you a moment to shine and talk. I haven't really even let you talk much right now. But That's writing fine. of this movie that I'm going to give out of one through ten, one being mm -hmm. just one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life, five being mm -hmm. just down the middle, completely average. Uh, it's not bad. It's mm -hmm. not good. It's pretty much just average. And then ten being like, this is one of the best movies I've ever seen, for sure. Um, I'm sure. going to give this a four out of ten. Four. A four wow. out of ten. And – I feel like our rating numbers are going to be vastly different and I'm excited to find out what yours is and the reasons why. Oh yeah. For sure. Okay. For sure. So I want to hear now that I gave my rating four out of 10, what's your rating and why are you giving it that Ooh. rating and spoiler free talk, please. Okay. Well, I'm going to give it a nine, mm. but I'm giving it I'm not going to full 10, but I'm going to give it a nine. Uh, the reason why I just, I don't know. I, every, I just loved everything about it from, in the opening all the way to the end, just the, the atmosphere the movie created, the pacing, just the sense of dread that was pretty much, you know, sustained throughout the whole thing. Like, uh, I just thought it was just excellent uh, acting. The performances were great. Um, you know, the attention to detail from that time period, everything was, you know, very meticulous. The way it was filmed, the music. Um, and there were some, you know, horrific moments, like you said, uh, in the movie that just kind of, you know, stuck with me long after the movie was over. So, so that's why. That's why I liked it as much as I did. See, here's the thing is that every reason you just gave, I, I completely mm -hmm. understand why you gave it that score and why you like it for that reason. Like, I totally understand. For me, though, yeah. almost everything that you just said for the reason why you like it is – the reason why I think this movie failed in my opinion. And trust me, I know I'm in the minority. I've already <laughs> looked it up. I know I'm the minority here, but it's just how I felt watching it. And uh, I watched it with my wife too. And she was like, this movie sucks. And I, <laughs> and I was like, I, that's kind of how I feel too. Um, personally, uh, I don't feel like it was scary at, almost at all. There was, I would say, two moments to me, two moments that felt scary. And I wouldn't even say full on scary more. So just like it got more tense and more towards the horror aspect of it. And I'll definitely get heavier in that when we get to spoilers, but I felt like this movie was an extremely slow burn. Um, it reminded me very much of hereditary midsummer. Uh, it follows those types of movies that are what you can tell as a slow burns. They're basically movies that you just, you're sitting there and not much is happening, but for some reason you're supposed to be enthralled in the movie. And I'm not exactly sure why in this movie, everybody is personally, but uh, I can tell you that I had to immediately put captions on because I couldn't understand a word that they said. And I'm dude, I'm all yeah, down for a period. <laughs> What did you say? I said that's understandable. It very the, the accent's very thick, so I get under you know having to put subtitles on. That's a, understandable. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Well, here's the thing. So <laughs> I've I've been pulling your arm for what a year now about watching the show Wentworth, and Wentworth is an Australian TV show, and so they have Australian accents. And when I'm watching them, I can understand about ninety five percent of what they say, but there still will be a few words that they say, and I'm like what because they they're australian and i'm not and so i always watch that show with captions as well and uh i i am fine with that yeah. and i'm fine with like game of thrones i'm fine with lord of the rings like i can understand that and yeah there still will be a few words i can't make out you know because they talk fast or whatever but for this one i would say yeah. seriously i couldn't mm -hmm. understand like anything they were saying and even when the subtitles were on 
sometimes they were talking faster than I could read what they were saying and comprehend what they were saying. And for me, like, I felt like I was doing a lot more like what is happening here than sitting back and enjoying the movie. Um, and that's, I mean, honestly, dude, like I can understand that the filmography was nice. Cinematography looked good. The atmosphere was tense. I, I get that. But for me, like if I'm not enjoying the movie, like even though I'm in the minority, it's definitely a problem in my opinion that I'm not even enjoying this. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, you know, definitely, like I said, the, the dialect is very, you know, it's very thick and it's hard to understand, you know, even myself, I, I didn't, I didn't put the subtitles on, but I definitely had a hard time picking out every word. I got, I heard enough to where I understood what they were talking about, but, um, but yeah, no, I get that. I get that. It's not a, an easy watch, especially when it comes to the, the language and all that. But, um, but ultimately, I, I don't know. I just, I think it helped with the authenticity of the time and, and uh, you know what the guy was going for. So it didn't bother me. Not enough to not enjoy the movie. At least. <laughs> That's fine. I respect that too. I also didn't even know that it was a 1600s timepiece. I just thought, I don't know. You know what I mean? I, I didn't think it was 1600s. But then I guess when you see the pilgrims, I guess, and the Indians in the very beginning, you can kind of yeah. figure out what time it might be. I guess I just didn't put it together. Um, also, I would say that the movie without giving anything away yet towards the end of it, you start finding out a lot of things about this specific family. And I wasn't sure how to make it out. I didn't know if they were leaving the ending pretty much open for interpretation or if they're trying to give you a solid answer to a lot of the questions that this movie was presenting for me. Uh, Cause by the end of it, I was like, wait, so if this does that and this is this, and then that is that, then, this must have been this, you know, you start trying to connect the dots, um, which I'll again, talk about spoiler heavy time, but not right now. But I just felt like kind of confused, dude. I don't know, man. I, like I felt <laughs> while I was watching this, I asked myself a few times, am I like dumb? You know what I mean? Like, am I like dumber than I think I am? Because like, am I one of the only people who's not understanding what they're saying and what's going on in this movie? Like I thought that probably mm -hmm. like three or four times. So I don't know. Um, <laughs> So I guess let's just get into it. Would we recommend this to people? It sounds like with a nine out of 10, you <laughs> definitely would recommend it to people. Obviously you recommended it to me. Um, so would you recommend this to everybody or is there like a specific horror movie <laughs> lover that probably would like this movie more than the other? Yeah, definitely not to everybody. It's not a, you know, a mainstream horror movie. Like a lot of people, are not going to like the movie. And I understand like with you, I was like, well, maybe, maybe you'll like it. Maybe I could see him not liking it. So it doesn't surprise me that you weren't into it, but um, I would definitely, I mean, the certain types of people, I would definitely recommend it. I'd be like, yeah, you're probably going to like this. You know, if I know their taste in movies. I'll be like, yeah, I know what you like and you might like this. Cause, uh, cause I did. So, but yeah. Okay. Um, and then what I, Tell, you know, here's the thing, Mike, is that I didn't like it. I've already said that now, but I still would recommend it to other people. And that's because I can recognize like the artistry in it and the craft that the guy was going for with the style of movie and the timepiece and all that. Yeah. And I, and I totally respect it. I, cause it was really, you know, as, as an amateur filmmaker that I'm, you know, striving to be at this moment, I'm starting to like really mm -hmm. pay attention to camera angles and shots that they're getting and, the, the edits and sure. the, you know all that stuff and uh, i thought this movie was put together very well um it's just mm. and i think other people would would obviously like it i just personally not a fan but but i would recommend it to people who don't mind slow burn type of movies i guess i'm more of like the the jump scary slasher type of guy when it comes to horror yeah. i'm not so much on the mm. eerie slow burn creepy side of horror i guess yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sure Okay, so I think that's going to wrap up uh, the spoiler-free section of this. So again, if you yeah. haven't seen this, it's been out for four, what, five years by now, but if you haven't seen this, it's on Netflix. You can watch it, come back. We're going to spoil the heck out of this and talk all about it. So I'm going to give you uh, about five seconds to turn it off. So five, four, three, two, one, spoiler time. Okay, so... I like to start off my spoiler section now with asking about uh, who your favorite and your least favorite character were. So out of uh, everybody in this movie, 
who was your favorite character? Um, favorite. <laughs> I mean, I guess the main gal. I forget uh, what's her name. Tom Thomason. Thomason. Yeah, yeah. Her. I guess. I mean, she's the least. I don't know. Despicable. I guess. I mean, Caleb the son. I guess would be too. But I don't know. I felt for her more than than anybody else for sure. So I, I would probably pick her. Definitely not the parents. <laughs> <laughs> so who's your least favorite character then uh it's probably a tie between with the twins the younger twins like they they just i don't know man they just bug the hell out of me and they just disturb me and yeah of the, of them I, i'd have to pick them because i don't know just just the way they looked something with their faces was really uh off-putting it was odd like they seemed like they were older than they were make made out to be like yeah, like the actors like, themselves yeah 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 they looked like they were they had like that disease, you know, where yeah. you age really fast, but you, I don't know. Something was, like. something didn't seem average, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my favorite, my least favorite character. So easily my favorite character was Thomason as well. I agree. Um, yeah. I, yeah. and now that we're in spoilers, like we can definitely talk about it. I pretty much yeah. hated like all of that family. Um, it was, oh, yeah. the mom was like super naggy. And like heck, uh, like God orientated, like orientated more oh, than yeah. everybody else was, which is funny because she's like, because she's so like, don't pass judgment, be a, a Christian, basically like, she, and ultimately she was passing judgment on everybody else by being oh, like, yeah. you're not good enough. You're not godly enough, you know, like in my family. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. that's even one of the, the giveaways at the end of the movie is like, she, the, what she realizes about herself is that she is. What is she, what what did she say? Do you remember? Where oh, no, no, that's oh, I can't believe I freaking didn't write this down. I can't remember that. But she basically said like she uh, she also sins too or something. She's not worthy or something like that. But oh yeah 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 something like that. But Tom Thomason was definitely my favorite. She was honestly the one I could understand the most. And then also she um, I really really like Anya Taylor Joy. The first time I had seen her was uh, in Split from back in, I think, 2017 or so um, with James McAvoy. She plays one of the, the main girls of that movie. And uh, I remember like looking at her in this movie, and I was like, she looks so familiar. And then I, I, that, that's the girl I put it together. She just, I think, was younger in this movie than she was when she was in Split. So she looks yeah. a little younger. But I definitely liked her character. She was cool. And then the least favorite character was also the twins. Um, yeah. A tie between the twins and one of you know they were the worst for sure and you pretty much just hit the nail on the head for me like they were super annoying a uh, real annoying yeah. and they just kept singing uh that song about uh black peter the goat like over and philip. over and over oh philip i'm sorry right black philip the goat like yeah. over and over and over again yeah and it was mm -hmm. so irritating and then there was even that moment when they're like all in the the cornfields or something like that and uh and they were like, the reason Samuel's gone is because of you. You're a witch or something. And she was like, I am a witch and I'm going to eat you. And like, and they're like, we're going to tell mom. And she's like, you better not. You know, like that whole exchange, like that was one of my more favorite scenes of the movie. Mm -hmm. But uh, those kids, man, those kids were freaking annoying. And then come oh, to yeah. find out they're like little Satan worshipers, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. All right. So I know that you said it's a nine out of 10 for you, but you didn't give it a 10 out of 10. So I'm curious, what are some of your gripes with this movie? Like what, what things bothered you about it? Uh, I mean, nothing like, you know, specifically, maybe it's just kind of, just the whole thing's kind of, you know, extremely dour. It's just very depressing the whole time. There's no, no kind of, you know, happiness at all, which I, you know, I understand with the story and what they're going for, but. But, it, you know, it's not a movie you can just be like, hey, let's, you know, what do you want to watch? How about The Witch? Like, it's not going to be something, oh, yeah, it's a fun one, just throw on anytime. So I guess that would be a complaint, but, you know, that's not what they were going for. But So you're saying like it's story, a, com I mean, a complaint that you have is rewatchability, basically, the rewatch value? Perhaps. I mean, in terms of, you know, the, the tone of the movie, it's not something that you just want to throw on for, you know, for fun or in the background kind of <laughs> Kind of it's kind of like uh, the Passion of the Christ, like right, great movie, yeah. but I'm not gonna watch it every other month, you know. Yeah, I'm not gonna put it on when I'm vacuuming, you know, and be like, oh yeah, just have it on in the background. 
Oh, it's this thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that looks painful. Um, all right. So can I also ask another gripe of yours possibly would be the hard to understand dialect? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, it's a gripe because it's hard to understand, but I know they're going for like authentic, you know, they, I, cause I read that he, like all the dialogue was from written text at that time, like actually, you know, transcribed into the script. So I know he's going for authenticity, but you know, sometimes it's, you can kind of let that slide a little bit just so you can kind of get a grasp more on what's being said. But, but yeah, yeah, I guess I would have to say. That. Yeah. I mean, like I've, I've already totally agreed that I think period pieces are fine and acceptable and, you know, you want to try to make it as perfect as you can, you know, whenever you see these, can't be 80s tv shows now or something you know stranger things like everything has to be down to the t because someone's going to call you out so i I completely get if you're doing a 1600s period piece you got to make sure they're using the correct lingo the correct terms the correct accents even though i felt that anya taylor joy so uh, thomason i felt like her accent sounded super scottish and i felt like everybody else sounded a little bit more english like what do you think yeah, I, I can see her sounding a little bit different than everybody else. Um, didn't bother me or anything, but yeah, I could, I could see that. Well, it was distracting a little bit for me because mm-hmm. I was like, why is, why is your Scottish accent so heavy, you know, but nobody else's is? Like, it's definitely there, but it sounded, I don't know, just kind of threw me off a little bit because I'm like, shouldn't the consistency be there? Like, because here's the thing is when you have people acting and you have them in – period piece times clothing and you have them saying the accents and the words that they would have said back then. Sometimes Mm -hmm. if you're not really good at doing it, you can totally tell that this person is trying to have an accent or trying to say those specific words instead of sounding like they're actually from that time. And there were times where I felt like some of the uh, actors were acting and I felt like some of the times like with Thomason and, and the dad, I felt like they actually felt like naturally like they were speaking uh, and I, I did appreciate that, but I just, man, I don't know. Sometimes I think it's swinging a miss and, or hitting a miss when you're doing period pieces. I don't know. Sometimes it's just oh, yeah. it's so natural. And sometimes it like takes me right out of the movie. Uh, yeah. Especially if it's like, if it's an established actor and they're trying to do an accent you've never heard him do before. And you're like, dude, you don't, I know you talk, talk Tom, Tom Cruise. You don't, you're not Scottish bro. Come on. <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's see, so some of my gripes of the movie, like I know I've said quite a few, and honestly, I'm not going to be like Debbie Downer this entire movie or, or movie review because nobody, one, nobody probably wants to hear that. And two, I didn't completely hate this movie. I just didn't really like it. And I didn't think it was that impressive personally. Um, especially there were lots of moments with the camera work where it went in and out of focus a little too long. And I don't know if that was intentional or if that was a mistake on their end. Like there's one specific moment when I believe the mom or something grabs uh, Thomason's face and they get up close and they're really close. And Anya Taylor Joy's face is like blurry for a good, like three seconds. And then it focuses, but it, it didn't seem like some sort of camera tr- camera trick. It seemed a lot more like a mess up, a mistake, you know? So I'm not sure, but that's what, some of the camera work was shoddy for me. So that was kind of a gripe. Some of the cuts, were really good and then some of them were i felt they should have been a little better so the scene when thomason is at the very end of the movie and she's talking to the goat and he's like i can grab your hand and help you sign the book from that moment it just cuts immediately to her walking away into the woods naked which i thought was a a, a fine cut but I didn't think they built this built the suspense enough because he's like, I can take your hand and sign it for you. And then like a split second later, that's when it cuts. I felt like there should have been a moment with like some music buildup, like, and then boom, then there's the cut, you know, but I, I didn't feel like they gave it an appropriate amount of time to like register what you're about to see and to, to let it breathe. And uh, I don't know, dude, like who am I to, to judge like, you know, production companies, but still like there's times where I feel like it would have been more effective if you did it a little bit differently. And I felt like a lot, I felt a lot of that during this movie. You're like, I don't yeah, agree. Um, no, not, I mean, not really, but I didn't have a problem with the cut. I know what you're talking about, but, uh, but I can see it's, it's a little jarring and, um, you know, it could probably could have been done differently and done 
just as well, but uh, it didn't bother me. <laughs> That's good. Like I go, I go into these movies saying this, I don't want somebody to not like somebody, it's not somebody, but I don't want somebody to not like something. You know, I, I want them to like this movie. I want people to enjoy this movie just because I didn't like it. I'm not the kind of person that's like, dude, you shouldn't like this. Don't let, don't tell people it's good. This movie sucks. Like if you like it, you like it. I'm happy that you like it. I just personally didn't. And I think like the biggest problem that I had with this is that I didn't find it like a horror movie. I found it more so a family drama in the 1600s with a hint of demonology in the background and witchcraft, like a hint of it. But it's not like you're watching a lot of witchcraft and you're seeing the witch a lot. I thought she'd be way more prom- like prominent in this movie. I thought she would be like a main villain of this movie that, that keeps, you know, Blair Witch Project style where she's like always outside the houses and stuff, you know, like, I don't know, dude. I felt like this movie could have been scary and I felt like they missed it. I think they focused so much more on like, because there's a small evil presence, we want to see how the family reacts to it. And I'm like that personally, I'm not into it to want to see that type of movie. I want to see more so like the scary witch, like scaring people and jump scares and like big loud moments of her like breaking through walls and stuff, you know, like that's my style. Like, I don't know. What do you think yeah. about that? Um, Man, I don't know. I'm, I'm telling you, man, like just the, like I said, the dread and the tension that's set up basically from, you know, once that baby's taken and, you know, you find out what happens to the baby and just from that, that moment alone, man, I was just like, Holy crap. Like there's some, these are some witches here. And then <laughs> after that, yeah, you don't see much, you know, for a while, witch wise, but just the fact that their house is just outside of the forest and you can see the forest right there and just, you can just feel it. Like they don't know exactly what's out there, but we do. And we know, you know, what's, what could happen to, you know, somebody else in their families. So just that alone, man, made it, I don't know, just made it work for me. And then, you know, you see a few more times with the witch and stuff, uh, you know, a couple more times throughout. And I thought it was just enough. And, and I was actually surprised that, that you even, like, I wasn't sure if it was kind of going to be kind of like the Brit Blair Witch Project where you don't really see the witch. It's kind of more implied and you kind of, you know, it's, oh, it's just outside or this and that. But I was surprised that, like, almost right away you see the witch doing some horrific stuff. So, so that I was, you know, I was like, oh, okay. And then, you know, like I said, once that happened, like the, just the tension for me was just sustained because you knew what was out there. The family wasn't quite sure. You know, they had hints of what could be out there. They, they knew about witchcraft and witches, obviously. But um, just the fact that, you know, we, we know what's just beyond those, those woods. And, uh, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty horrific stuff, man. That's that baby, like, goodness goodness so let's talk about that baby scene because that's obviously like the scene of this movie so when people talk about this movie it's like the baby the baby right so actually i had been told that a baby gets eaten in the movie and it's pretty much like overboard like it's a little showing a little too much and i was like oh my god what is this movie gonna be and so i started watching it and when the minute that the baby got taken which i loved that concept of her playing peekaboo and all of a sudden it's just baby's gone I loved that personally. I did. And then you hear and you see the witch taking it to the, her little cabin or something. And I thought it was going to be really like gory. And it really wasn't. It was just her kind of like grinding something, which is implied that she's grinding up the kid. And then she's like eating it and smothering it all over her body and stuff. Um, I thought you were going to see like some little baby hands and some baby feet and ears and stuff, you know, but you, and I'm glad I didn't, I didn't want to see that, but because they didn't show that I was like, okay, I don't understand though why people are saying this is so gross. And so like that's a little overboard because you don't see anything. It's obviously just like effects and stuff, you know, like jello or something. Um, I did like that scene. I thought it was crazy and, and really ballsy. And that's why I said when I first saw this, the first like 10, 15 minutes of this movie, and I was totally down to go back because I loved that. I was like, this is cool, dude. This is like scary. And uh, I'm ready for it. But I felt like that was like honestly the most intense part of the movie until, you know, the ending stuff started happening. But I don't know. I felt like maybe they showed their best card a little too early in the game. That should have been something that happened like midway through. I don't know. What do you think about that baby scene? Yeah, I mean... I think I think it was good to have it, you know, right at the beginning. Like I said, for me, like that that really set the 
you know, the tension level just like right there. I was just like, oh my God, like these are real witches that aren't messing around. Like they'll take a baby and, you know, bring a knife out and grind them up, you know? So, so that alone, like, like I said, just really, I don't know, sold the movie for me. And then, yeah, like I said, you know, like you said that the, it's probably the most, you know, intense scene in the movie. Sure. I would definitely agree. But, um, you know, there's some couple things like towards the end that kind of do it for me too with the, Anytime there's like naked fat witches, dude, that's that that just scares the hell out of me, man. Like, <laughs> have you seen so, Midsummer yet? No, I. It's one I've been meaning to. I I think I started it one night and like real late, and I fell asleep. You know, okay. fifteen minutes. Well, but I okay. do want to. There's watch. a lot of naked old ladies in that movie. Oh, uh, okay. Well, like a lot to where it's uncomfortable. I'm not sure me. if I should be excited about that or not. Uh, I mean, well, how about watch it, that scene and let me know, awesome. know if you got excited. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Not like that. Not like that. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Talking about fat naked ladies. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, witches. Oh, witches, witches, witches. Speaking of witches. So, you know how in the beginning it shows like the old fat witch or not old, you know, like the old, I guess, fat witch. And then yeah, yeah. in the middle of the movie, when um, the son, uh, Caleb gets abducted pretty much by her, she's like a pretty witch. Mm-hmm. I am a little confused. So is she a different witch or is that the same witch like shape shifting? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Um, you know, we do find out later there's other witches. So, it could be one of the other ones. I'm not sure. Cause you, like you said, you know, it's a much younger, you know, beautiful witch versus what we saw at the beginning. So not a hundred percent sure. I mean, I assume it's the same one since it's, you know, close enough proximity to where they were, but not, not a hundred percent sure. Cause that threw me off a little bit because she, uh, she goes to like kiss Caleb and uh, then she, she has like this scary, like monster hand that comes out from behind him. Yeah. yeah. That's why I'm like, okay, is this shape shifting or is this just a, a different lady now that we know that there are more witches? And I started thinking, okay, well, this this girl is really pretty, this witch, and she's got like a lot of cleavage showing. Like she had some big old boobies that were like popping out of the top. And there was also an earlier scene when Caleb and Thomason are, I think they're like washing clothes or something in the in the water. And he's like staring at her chest. And so obviously he's like infatuated with cleavage. So that's why I started thinking like, okay, is this witch, um, is she, does she show like your desire and that's how she lures you in or something? Um, and yeah. I felt like they didn't, they didn't explain the witch, who she was, what her abilities were. Is she just an old lady that is claimed to be a witch or does she shape shift? Does she use spells? Does she curse things? Like, I'm not sure. And like, that's part of the confusion that I had with this movie is because like I was, dude, I was totally like I was totally into the movie. It wasn't like I turned it on like, okay, let me get this piece of crap over with. Cause I have to watch it. Like I was intrigued and that's why I watched it with my wife. Like, let's watch this, you know? And like, for me, I just felt so confused, man. Like, and I felt like at the end, so was Thomason a, like a witch the whole time? Was she evil the whole time? Cause she didn't do anything evil. What? Yeah, no, no, she, she definitely wasn't. Um, no, because, you know, she went to the goat and she's like, hey, basically, you know, I'll sell my soul to you, basically. So, so well, yeah, because, you know, you see her at the beginning and she's praying and she's asking for God for forgiveness and for grace and all that. And then, you know, she was trying to be good the whole time and her family turned against her. Everybody's dead. So, hey, what else do I got left? You know, let's go talk to the goat. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I mean, she wasn't talking to Tom Brady. <laughs> right, yeah <laughs> the goat okay yeah, but oops yeah. um okay so uh comedy hour with greg starts now uh just kidding okay so <clears throat> let's talk about the ending stuff um i don't get it so were the twins actually evil <laughs> uh yeah i think so or at least they were you know talking with black philip and they were I don't know if they were full on, you know, sold their soul kind of thing or if they were just dabbling in it. But, uh, but there was definitely some shenanigans going on with them for sure. Okay. Um, and then you said Thomas and 
basically became a witch at the end, but she had been trying to fight it the whole time. So then was Caleb evil? Because right after he dies, after giving that like really uh, long monologue, basically about like, Oh, I'm with Christ. Walk with me and kiss me with your, you know, and like he was doing all that. And then, uh, then he died, which was weird. Um, basically, the dad or the mom was like, he was evil. Oh, the mom was like, he's evil. And the dad was like, no, he was praying. And she goes, the devil can recite scripture too, basically. Mm-hmm. And uh, so then that also left me with the answer. Like, was he possessed? Was he actually the devil? Or was he actually good God ridden uh, Caleb at the very end? Or like, so what was he? Like, I'm seriously asking you because you like the movie. So did you understand that? Cause I I'm confused. Um, well, I don't think he was evil. I think he was just, you know, the witch did something to him, you know, when she was making out with him or whatever. And then, you know, he comes back and yeah, I mean, I don't understand exactly what, what was happening, but obviously there's some sort of, you know, evil spirit possession going on with him to where, you know, eventually it killed him. So, I mean, exactly what was happening. I don't know exactly, but obviously it did that caused that, but I don't think he was you know, evil because of it. I think that was, you know, just speculation on the mom's part. But, so I'm, um, I don't know. I could be wrong. When you watch a movie like this, that's, you can tell is like an independent type of film. So it's a uh, very contained, very, it's not a big budget blockbuster. It's like, it's some sort of creative project that you can see that somebody made. Like, obviously, mm-hmm. um, this was not just some random mirror max being like, let's make a 1600s time period piece. Like this was something that somebody had a passion for Robert Eggert. And, uh, yeah, yeah which is cool and i respect that but uh when you have a movie like this like i feel like the reason you make something so independent and personal is because you have something you're trying to say as the director and the writer um and so when this movie was ending nearing end i was thinking okay what is what is the subliminal message that he's trying to say through the characters, through the story, through the movie. Cause I could tell that something was trying to shout out to me and what I took out of this. And I want to know if you agree or disagree is that it wasn't one of them that was evil. They all had evil inside of them and their evil bested all of them because the dad basically like allowed himself to die because he was like, God take me for being the way I am. The mom admitted her faults. Caleb gave into his cleavage. The kids gave into black. Was it Peter or something? Uh, Phil. I'm sorry, dude. Black Philip. And then uh, Th- Thomason basically gave into the to the goat as well. And it's like I feel like they were trying all so hard to be godly that they were ignoring the fact that they were all sinners. They were so quick to point fingers on blame on everybody like you need to pray more you need to pray more you're not praying enough you're not doing enough like that god wants you to do um i feel like at the end they all realize that they're like major sinners and their sins took them over i don't know that's what i took out of it what did what do you think about that yeah i mean i can see that um you know they definitely all had their issues that they needed to work out um and in the end uh, i guess they they worked them out right but yeah, man, I mean, you know, uh, there's a lot of, you know, religious paranoia in the movie for sure, um, you know, with the mom and then all the witchcraft paranoia, which is weird because, like, you know, in in the reality back then there was the paranoia because, you know, there really wasn't witches, but in the movie there's the paranoia, but there really are witches. So it's kind of like, yeah. well, is this being accurate? Not really because there really wasn't witches, but, but yeah, yeah. Um, no, I can definitely see what you're saying about each person having, you know, their own sins. And then, um, you know, Black Phillip's kind of like the, I guess, the vessel to kind of <laughs> show them, you know, like their true selves, I guess. So, yeah, I can see that. Uh, yeah. And then I have to bring this up because it doesn't bother me because I'm not weird like that, but it definitely <laughs> alerted me a few moments in the movie and three of them specifically Mm -hmm. first one is the baby scene i understand you're making a movie and you want it to be weird and creepy and stuff but the witch was dragging her hand down the baby's body which was a little boy obviously and he was naked so he saw his little ding dong and she like was caressing his face and then she like caressed his belly 
And then she even like kind of caressed his like wiener. And I was like, look, I know this is a movie, but like, shouldn't you not be doing that? You know what I mean? Like, is that, I don't know, dude, it felt a little wrong to me. Like, I understand, like, you don't need to show that. Like, why are you doing that? That's actually somebody's kid that you're like touching. I don't know. Like it like kind of just made me feel like, I don't think this should be in this movie. Like you can imply it, but I don't think you should show it. What did you think about that? Well, I don't know. I mean, did it really like show like actually caressing down there? Because I know like yeah, you see she the like hand, cups it. She like she cups it. That could have been you know could have been an illusion. They could have had hand kind of on one side maybe, and it looked like it maybe. I don't think they, they would have yeah. actually had somebody fondling a baby on, on film. Like I'm sure, pretty sure they would have had, you know some standards and practices that would be like hey hey hey. So or maybe maybe it was a CG baby. Maybe that's where the four million went. You know. Oh snap! Maybe, yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Just, just either way. Just kind of like, I know it was not yeah. a sexual thing at at all. It was more like, oh, look at this delicious baby that I'm about to eat, and I'm gonna eat every part of it. I so I understand it, but it just it was a little yeah. like, uh, you know. And then another yeah, part yeah. that kind of made me kind of question the same thing was the witch scene with the with Caleb in the woods, um, where she like starts mm-hmm. to like make out with him. Because again, I know this is acting. I know this is not real, but she did still kind of like make out with like a twelve-year-old boy. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah. I, I understand it's it's an independent, it's like a personal movie, and it's it's all just business. But it still felt like you shouldn't show that. Like I don't know, <laughs> it felt weird to me that they would show that on, especially nowadays. You know, uh, <laughs> I don't know, dude. That and then the last part that bothered me was how the f old was anya taylor joy when she shot this movie and walked on camera naked (laughs) oh and they also showed caleb naked from behind like dude i don't know i felt like that's weird (laughs) it's too much like stuff going on with adults that i didn't find appropriate personally maybe it's because i'm a dad and like you know what i mean like if that like if that was my kid i'd be like oh i don't care that this is a movie this is like too much yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there was body doubles with with them or not, or something. I don't know. But but it's still implied that they're you know the characters' age and that they're yeah. naked. So yeah, I, mean, I get I, it. But. It just I don't know. It just struck me a little bit off. I guess. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, who do you think out of the family was the best actor? Um. I don't know probably the dad i like the dad i mean i've seen him in other things you know and he's always good so he's always very intense and just very ugh. <laughs> just gross looking <laughs> but I, thought, I think I, I think i liked him the most so. yeah i thought um thomason was probably the best actor i think she had like the most to do her and the dad definitely were the top um the yeah. top ones ah dude um I'm trying to think, like, what do I want to say about this movie? I mean, let me talk about some good stuff about this movie that I thought. Um, I definitely thought the acting was good. It's just I couldn't understand them and, and understand what they were saying. But still, it was good acting for sure. Um, again, I thought the cinematography was really good. There were a few choppy editing moments. Not ed- yeah, editing and then focus issues, in my opinion. But I liked that a lot. Um, I really liked... Yeah, I really liked when Thomason is talking to Black Philip. Yes. Got her. Yeah, Philip, okay. At the end, when she goes in there and the goat is there, and basically she's like, what do you want me to do? Like, talk to me, you know, and, and I'll sign my soul, like you said. And he was just like, the, the slow, whispery, deep man voice, like, talk of the goat. Dude, it, that was like, that was probably my favorite part of the movie was probably at the very end part. Um, but one thing I was confused about is, so did he like turn into a man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like the true form or whatever, you know, the Satan in the flesh, I guess, kind of thing. Okay, so then that opens up more questions, <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> for me. So is the witch a whole different problem in the movie or are they all connected? is black Philip like bringing the witch towards the family or is black like, is he like Satan that oversees everything or is he like, 
is this seriously like two different evil entities like messing with the same <laughs> family? Yeah, no, I think they're they're connected. Um, I, I don't know if they, you know, work directly with each other or not, but I mean, I'm pretty sure it's the same evil that's coming from, you know, from the witch, from the goat. It's it's kind of all, you know, satanic power or whatever you want to call it. So, I mean, I guess I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe they're maybe it's two totally separate things, and they just happen to coincide at the, you know at the same time. So. Yeah. So th- that's why I'm saying like. It, it, I understand that they they're all connected somehow. Like I totally get that. It's just that I, I that's where I feel like sometimes these movies are a little so like such period pieces that I feel like sometimes they lack really good story. And I felt like I felt like the story was just so kind of like blah. Like a family just leaves a town that they were in, and then they try to make it on their own, and all their stuff is like going sour and bad and rotting because of some evil presence. And then they all turn their back on each other. And it's like one of them because of which I don't know. It's like, I don't know. Like I, I just, I guess maybe I was, de- I was let down. I wanted more in it, like more, yeah. just more something. I just felt like there was just three separate acts of them just on this like cornfield farm. And it's like, that's it. I just, I felt like there was nothing else to it, dude. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, man. yeah, there's, there's not a lot to the story for sure. It's you know, pretty simple. But, but, it um, is, yeah. I don't know. I just I thought thought it was a, just very effective the way it was done, and uh, you know everything that happens, the whole thing with with Caleb and that whole scene was like just insane. Like the, the twins are on the ground, like convulsing, and they think that the older daughter's the witch, and they start you know, accusing each other and all that. I don't know. I just yeah, scenes like that just really. I really sold it for me. So I think that was a really uh, powerful scene too that you were just talking about with the with Caleb like flipping out pretty much and and then I really liked when they were like she's doing this she's evil and, and they were trying to pray and she's like stop praying and they're like see <laughs> like she's trying to get me yeah. to stop praying and then even the dad was like like baby you got to tell me the truth here like I know that you're saying that you love God but like you kind of stopped them from praying. You know, to save your brother, like, are you evil? I got to know. So that way, because, you know, we can pray it away, you know, pray the evil away. And uh, she, she just kept denying it. And that's why, like, it struck me so odd because it's like, okay, are you, are you actually, like, evil? Or are you really just being blamed for something that you have no control over? But then, do the twins get eaten as well by the witch? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean... You don't you don't see what happens to them. They're just gone in the morning. So, but the witch was there. You figure, you know, they either went with her or she killed them. Don't know. They're gone. I liked that part though. See, that part was like that felt like horror to me. Was you know because they were like sitting in there and that was like one of those like they see something in the shadows making noises and they're like <gasps> and they flip out and then you see it's the actual witch. And even though I felt it was super corny when she turned around, she was like, hey, you know, like I was like, <laughs> it had blood, you know, like I, it just seemed a little Snow White to me, a little the witch <laughs> from Snow White, but yeah, he's a black hat, you know? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, got an apple. You want to, you want an apple? Yeah. <laughs> um, dude, I totally didn't, didn't want to like just rag on this movie and like talk smack about it. Cause no. I, I know that people like it and I'm, I'm, I'm sure people are going to comment you know, down below and they're going to let me know that I'm way wrong and I am in the minority. And I, I understand that and I accept it. I just, I don't, I guess I'm just not a slow burn kind of guy. I think I'm just more of like, I need the suspense and the music and the walking down the hallway and what's going to pop out at you type of scary movie. Like that's, I guess that's my type of movie. Um, But is there some more stuff you want to say about it? Like some more reasons you love it or some, some scenes that we didn't talk about that you really liked? And why you like them? Yeah, well, first of all, I want to say, you know, in the comments, I'm sure you'll have plenty of people that agree with you. There'll be a good number. You won't be just completely ragged on. I'm sure that people are like, yeah, I didn't like it either. Yeah, me too. So <laughs> you'll be okay there, I think. So um, other scenes, I mean, you know, the scene where they go hunting, you know, before Caleb gets taken, or that's that's a little bit later, but the scene where they go hunting and they have there's that rabbit that they try to sh- shoot. Remember, uh, the dad's trying to shoot the rabbit and then the gun backfires on him. Um, oh, yeah. 
yeah, that I read about that. I guess I guess rabbits are also considered to be you know, like evil animals too, kind of like the goat, like at least back in that time, anyways. So that's why the rabbit was there. But that whole scene, and then um, you know, just the way the dad is like, you know, he was lying to the mom, like he sold something of hers. I forgot what it was, some kind of like cup or something, and then but he didn't tell her about it. And there's this whole like family dynamic where you know everybody's kind of keeping something from each person and everything um you know that that aspect of the movie too which you know like you said it, a lot of it a lot of time it doesn't seem like a, a horror movie it seems more like a, a period drama where it's you know it's a family kind of deterior deteriorating um yeah. and um i don't know I, just, I like i like that aspect of it but then also you know there is a horror element for sure i mean there's actual witch and um just the combination of the two and just the way it all plays out like I don't know, just with the music, the way it's this kind of like loud droning sound that, um, I don't know, just it's creepy and I don't know, just really enjoy it. I think um, for me, what was misleading about this movie is that it's, it's called The Witch and The Witch is 5% of this whole movie. The, like the rest is the whole family drama that I was talking about. And I kind of feel like this could have been almost the same movie if – like you know, I forgot the reason why they had to leave the town in the beginning of the movie, but they end up finding a spot where they they're you know gonna start building their harvest and stuff. And I felt like the movie could have been the same movie without a horror element to it. It could have just been like the struggles of a family out there trying to grow food in this spot, and like their food keeps rotting or it's not growing in time. They don't have enough for winter. What it's like to be cooped up with you know, and I kind of feel like the horror witchcraft black magic aspect of it almost could have just been taken out, you know? And, uh, that's why I feel like it, maybe it shouldn't have been called the witch. Like, I don't know, dude, like who, again, who am I to say that? But I just, I don't, it, it's kind of like, imagine going to see a movie that's called like aliens attack or something. And you go there and, there's like two scenes with aliens and the rest is just like about some family living at home arguing about stuff. You'd be like, this isn't an alien movie. You know, this is a family movie with like aliens. And that's kind of how I felt about this. This isn't like a witch movie. This is more so about a family who's suffering and then a witch element is added to it. That's kind of how I felt. So I felt like it was misleading in that sense. Yeah, no, I, I get that. It's not a, you know, witch heavy, but I mean, the witch is kind of like the, kind of the start of their at least once they get to their new home it's kind of the start of their problem you know with the baby being taken that kind of sets everything else on a spiral and you know like the witch like i said the witch is you always feel the presence you know out there in the woods even if you're not seeing her the whole time so i think it's appropriate you know i don't know i don't know if you have to have the, the two v's for the witch but you know you can just call it the witch i would be fine with that so <laughs> the vivich yeah the vivich okay okay i think we're good with this movie uh we reviewed this one and uh i'm gonna tell you guys this like i can be persuaded so i went i remember when hereditary came out i was totally like i watched it and i was like this movie sucks and it's again it's funny because it's one of those slow burn types of movies so i'm starting to see a connection here but when it was over with I was like, I'll never watch that again. It was overhyped. I don't like it. Blah, blah, blah. And now that it's been about a year or so since I've seen it, and I've heard so many good things about it, like listening to podcast reviews and stuff, I kind of now want to go back and rewatch it. And sure. because of that, you know, I, I don't know, maybe I do like it more than I thought I did, or maybe I'm willing to give it another chance. And that's kind of how I feel about this one. Like, I definitely want to start hearing more reviews and stuff. And I want to hear, I want to hear people who don't like it I want to hear their reasons too. Cause I'm going to hear like all these people that do like it. You know what I mean? I want to hear like all these different types of reasons like uh, Jeremy Johns, you know, the movie reviewer, that guy. Oh yeah. Yeah. He reviewed it. Those him and Chris Stuckman are the two reviews that I looked up after I watched it. And Chris Stuckman oh, yeah. was like, this is one of the best movies ever. And I was like, what? And then mm -hmm. uh, uh, the other guy was basically like, I can't lie to you and tell you that I wasn't bored through a lot of it. And he goes, and it's not really scary and stuff. And he's like, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of hate as well. And so, like, I got mm -hmm. to see both different sides of the argument. So I, yeah. I was kind of turned for some things. And then I was 
confirmed for some things. So I, I don't know, like I might be able to switch down the line and I might like it later <laughs> on, but as of right now, it's, it's not my style of movie. I can just tell you that much. <laughs> So, uh, okay. So Mike, thanks for yeah. being on this episode, my man. I appreciate it. And, uh, we will Got do it. another episode really soon. And you and I are going to do, uh, 1990s misery. That's the next one that we're going to do. So again, thank you for being a part of this and I will talk to you later.